What's up, beautiful? How you doing today? Oh, you look stunning. Thank you for being here. Welcome back. Or if you're new, welcome. Oh, that was such a YouTuber thing to say. I hated that. Oh, I'm not prepared for this intro, but that's okay because you know what's going on. I'm Brad. I'm a hairdresser. That's what I do. I'm gonna watch a video today, or maybe a couple videos of girls messing up their perms. Perms are a difficult thing to do. Even if you get them professionally done sometimes, they come out bad because listen, it is a very, very hard technique to master. There's a lot of things that make up a good perm. There's a lot of things you need to think about. There's a lot of experience you need. There's a lot of a lot of things. And we'll go over that today. While we watch this girl today get a ramen noodle perm, I was all over YouTube yesterday looking up some hair videos and came across this thumbnail. And I was like, Ooh, that is either badly permed hair or somebody laid freshly cooked ramen noodles on their head. And we will find out which one that is today. Let's watch some horrible perm jobs be done. Let's do it. Our first video is by Annabelle Campbell. I got a curly perm before and after. Let's see what's going on. Okay, so immediately we are starting off with some really, really long, luscious, blonde hair. And there is no sound to this video, by the way. So if you're wondering what they're saying, I don't know. She has pre lightened hair. She has bleached her hair. She has definitely probably caused some damage to it. We're definitely going to want to go with an acid perm, hopefully, because those are much gentler with a lower pH value than an alkaline perm. We definitely don't want to be using alkaline because probably fry your hair off. And hopefully that doesn't happen. I would be weary about perming hair that has been lightened this much. It's just risky. You're probably not going to get this hair perm you want no matter if it's done right or not just because the chemicals don't like to work like that on damaged hair we shall see my salon actually loved perms but we did like beach wave perms so like a lot of young kids came to get them it was just such a tedious process and i was like dude i don't want to do this oh oh why are we going in with literally the smallest perm rods possible. There's no way this girl came to get her hair done and was like, I want the tightest, smallest, littlest, tiniest waves you can possibly put in my hair. I wouldn't be using rods at all, honestly. I'd be using these things which are like long, metal rods that go in the hair and kind of form a beach wave rather than like a tight, tight curl. There are different rods out there for different techniques and modern perming for younger people. You're not gonna wanna use rods, man. You're gonna wanna use these things. Um, they'll still give you a lot of curl, but it'll be more like this instead of like this, you know? So we are doing miniature sections and we are doing vertical curls, which is gonna make it even extra corkscrew. They're gonna be like this when you unravel them. They're not gonna be like wavy, they're gonna be like And this girl has a million of them in her hair. She can wrap a damn rod. That is not the easiest thing to do, especially with hair this long. Ooh, you can tell she got those things tight in there. I see you. That's about the only good thing going on right now. Listen, I'm not an expert in perming, but I know this ain't right. Let's see, I got my matcha latte. And boy, does it taste good. It is good. Oh, this I think will be the most accurate depiction of ramen noodle hair I think I will ever see in my entire life. I already know how this is gonna come out, but I also am interested in how she applies the rest, the perming solution, the neutralizer, and then I wanna see how she kind of styles it. I still wanna know how this ends up. Oh, no. I haven't seen anybody put their head forward and then put the waving solution on because because if you get that stuff in your eyes, you will go blind. Not really, you won't actually go blind, but like, it's a possibility. It's very, very bad. It literally reforms the bonds in your hair. Imagine that going into your eyeballs. You wouldn't want that. So you're not gonna wanna put your head forward, you're gonna wanna put your head back, so that way the hairstylist can drop the solution on your head and it'll all fall back instead of falling into your face. And then basically with waving solution, you gotta go on each strand, up and down up and down. Everything has to be done so even. It is so meticulous and everything has to be perfectly coated um, in order to get very consistent waves. She's going in there and she's going to keep going and going and going until probably the solution is gone and it's pretty boring. It looks like she's doing a very consistent job. So we'll give her that. We'll give her that. <laughs> 10 out of 10 on that one. When I did do perms, I was always taught to put 
the waving solution literally directly into the hair. So like the rods here, the hair's wrapped around. You would literally go like in to the hair, put it in there. Because sometimes when the hair is so thick and you wrap it around the rods, there's so many layers on the rod that are wrapped around that you end up only getting the wave solution on the top surface and not actually inside of the rod. So you kind of have to like inject it like a little needle. I don't know. She has so many damn rods in her head. I don't think it's going to matter anyways. I think it's going to penetrate the entire rod no matter what. Should be fine. Why are we rinsing her head forward? That is so bad. This is like perming 101. It's like to never ever get the perming solution in somebody's eyeballs. And all I'm seeing is like danger. I would never, oh my God, rinse somebody's head forward. What is even the reasoning for that? She has like a hairdressing sink. Just lean your client back. I think she, cause she's trying to get like the back of her neck, but like there's other ways of doing that. Just have the client move their head side to side while you're rinsing it. And it is a painful moment in time. Do you notice that how much I hate perming? I will never do one again. Basically what happens in a perm, you put the perming solution on. The bonds are snapped. So they're like this, the hair, and naturally these people's hair people that usually get perms have straight hair. So the bonds and the straight hair are snapped and they are reformed into a wave. And they're glued back together with the neutralizer in this formation. So they're like, science, man. It's pretty cool. After you put the neutralizing solution on, you're gonna wait, I think about five minutes. Ooh, that could be wrong. I kind of forget, I'm not gonna lie. It's been a while. 90% sure. And then you get to do the reveal. And oh my God, in what world, in what universe is this acceptable? Oh my, this girl's like, and what in the hell did you just do to me? What is happening here? This girl is not only gonna have kind of the ugliest curls ever, she is gonna have damaged hair. It's gonna be dry as hell all the time and it's going to probably be very, very frizzy after this. Now we're rinsing the rest of the neutralizer out. <laughs> and this poor girl, she seems like she loves it though. <gasps> what are we doing back there? You are not supposed to brush out Oh no! You honestly should just take your client back to their seat after taking the rods out, rake your fingers through, reform the curl, scrunch it up, put some nice holding gel or something that'll give your hair hold and then just diffuse it and just try to not rough up the curl at all because your hair is still setting in place. The reason why we don't brush it after we take the rods out is because if you brush it, you're gonna create frizz and you can literally perm frizz into your hair. The frizz will just never go away. So that is what's going on here. And I'm guessing that our hair is gonna be super duper ooper frizzy because she's literally brushing out ramen noodle curls right now. Stop brushing the hair stop never ever never ever do that don't do that no 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 this would be good for maybe like a nine-year-old woman who like never changed her style but otherwise hell no oh my god Put a diffuser on your blow dryer. Put a put one on. Stop roughing the curl up. I mean, like, don't even bother if you're not gonna do this properly. Just let it air dry. The frizz is horrendous. She is living her ramen noodle life, and at least she's happy with it. <laughs> Thanks for watching my beef ramen noodle tutorial. <laughs> Damn it, man, she forgot to add the flavor packet. I kind of feel bad, but also like mad entertained. <laughs> now let's watch Corinna Arc. Hair perm fail, do not try this at home. I hope nobody tries this at home. Even some of the most experienced hairdressers don't know how to do them. So just find a perming expert or some shit. Like, I don't know, man. I'm not saying if you go to a hairdresser, you're gonna get a good one because you might not. This one is just hard. I saw one of my coworkers permed her hair and it looked really cute on her. So I'm like, oh, perfect. I'm gonna do that, but at home. Great. There is a quite a big of a chance that my hair might fall out. So I'm just like a little like scared, like a little scared. So I'm using this home perm. So listen. Corinna, there are different kinds of perming solutions. Acidic, alkaline, exothermic. You bought a box kit. I don't even know what kind of perming solution that is. We don't even know. It could be anything. And I would 
not use an alkaline perm on you because your ends are compromised. Those things look a bit dry and damaged already. I would not go in there with another thing. That is why I draw the line. I would not do that. Not use if your hair has been double processed, bleached, and toned. This is like funny and all, Corinna, but like, I think not. I'm figuring like one perm is not gonna be as much damage as, I don't know, maybe six months of using heat all the time. In Correct. Honestly, you using heat on your hair for six months is probably better than using an alkaline perm on your already pre-lightened hair. Basically, <laughs> I use these wrappers to put at the end of my hair, and uh -huh. then I put like the curler, and see, like these aren't like, my hair is not gonna look like telephone cords, but it's gonna be like a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna use bigger sections. Interesting, cause the last person I think was a hairdresser, and this girl is not, and she actually knows a bit more about how to form the type of wave um, she's looking for, because she's using rods, and she's using end papers, she's doing bigger sections, that's probably something that I would have done. This is so far actually not the worst, except it's gonna get bad when she uses the alkaline perming solution on her pre lightened hair. I feel like I might just start like at the top, or the crown area, that's what I saw in a lot of the videos. My hair is okay. just like so damaged. I have to be really careful in the shower when I do it. I would never in a million years allow this girl to perm her hair. Such a bad idea. Even looking through the screen right now, I can see just how much damage is going on in her hair and it is concerning. I would not advise, it. like never advise to do this, never. Those things are so hard to master. <laughs> you gotta roll it and you twist them in the front. What is the sectioning? What is that? It's not like the worst, I don't know. Apply petroleum jelly around the hairline. Okay, I have double wear on, so absolutely not. Saturate every curl for most even results. Uh, uh, no, I don't. I mean, we have some sections going in all different directions, girl. There is no pattern going on here. I think she just put them all in. You gotta focus on which way the rods are going directionally. If you place them going back up here, you're gonna get more height. If you place them on the side going back, you're gonna get nice waves going back. Depending on where you place them, it's gonna do different things. So I'm gonna use gloves because duh, you need to. And I couldn't find my like clear ones. So that's the part you listen to, to wear gloves. No, no, nothing else. It says, do not even do this on your hair. And you're still like, okay, I will do it. And they're like, wear gloves. And she's like, I 100% I'm wearing gloves. Perming solution smells like feet. For a that is one like of the bad most feet. disgusting things that's ever smelled in my entire life. Especially the ones from like CVS probably smell like absolute crap. The new ones like don't smell that bad. They've done a pretty good job at like masking the odor these days. You would smell it in your hair for like a month later. I know the people that have ever smelled perm will know what I'm talking about. So she's also dragging her hair very far from the back forward. She is going to literally perm her hair so that it is flat to her scalp in the back. She's not gonna have any volume anymore. The back of her hair is just so flattened out. So when that perming solution goes on there, it's just gonna perm her hair into an, a literally flat as can be formation. I'm lucky if I'll get rid of two drops. You know what I mean? I'm just going way too slow, but it's scaring me. I'm genuinely getting scared. <laughs> What am I doing? So I'm gonna try to check the curl, I guess. That's what I said to do. You don't unwrap the entire thing? No! <laughs> The whole perming process is just very gentle. You gotta be super, super gentle with everything. So if you're trying to check the curl, you unravel it a tiny bit and you just push it back towards the head. You see if the curl kind of bounces out and then you gently wrap back up, put more solution on and let it sit. This is a very, very gentle process and she missed an entire piece of hair. I'm never doing DIYs anymore, ever. Don't this ever. It's not even a DIY, it's just dumb. Honestly, I think that all the time has gone by and I need to wash this out. So I'm, now I'm doing the neutralizer. Really scared, annoyed. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. I might just- Did she even rinse it before? Months. I have no idea. Sometimes when I'm stressed, I just like, I can't hide it. I'm happy her hair is not falling off because I'm honestly kind of surprised it's not. Alkaline perms are seriously harsh. So and should only be done on people with very, very nice, nice, healthy, thick hair. So of course the diffuser that I wanted to use doesn't even work the split dryer, so we're gonna skip that step. Ah! But it just turned out looking so... <laughs> so 80s. It's an 80s horribly done perm. And her hair is so 
freaking frizzy. Oh, those ends too. They're just like tink. I'm sure if I put some hair oil in, it'll like definitely like kind of comb it yeah. down. Because right now it's just. Because hair oil is going to save you at this point. I thought that it would turn out a lot different, but it didn't. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go put like two ounces of oil in my hair because it's looking a little, a little crispy, a little dry. <sighs> just promise me if you've seen this video, don't. Do it at home. And if you go to a professional, please do your research when getting a perm. It's a very specialty sort of thing. Not a lot of people do them and not a lot of people do them right. It's very, very difficult. It takes a long time to master the art of perming. Clearly it can go very wrong. And that is all for today. Follow me on Instagram at BradMondoNYC and Twitter at BradMondoNYC. Follow my hair care brand Xmondo Hair on Instagram. Subscribe to my new channel, Brad and Eric, for more content. Shop my new merch linked below. And that is all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to live your extra life. And I will see you all next time. Peace.